the new kid on the block, evacuated tubes. This is a Chinese twin tube. These have gone through three different times of ups and downs, evacuated tubes. And the first ones, what they had was a tube where they just put many, many little tiny flat plate collectors inside an evacuated tube. What do I mean by evacuated tube? It's got a vacuum pulled on it. What's the benefit of a vacuum? It's the best darn insulator there is. It really way beats. This has a vacuum between two pieces of glass and it's less than a quarter of an inch. And it way beats all the insulation that's in that flat plate collector. Much better. Because a vacuum is such a good insulator. That's the whole game with these. That's it. They have really superior insulation, as long as they got the vacuum. And what happened with early vacuum tubes is they had this connection right here, glass to copper. Is there a difference in, in expansion contraction? So they try to make up with it with grommets. If anybody in here has experience with heating air conditioning, you know a vacuum is really hard to keep. Or experimentation, lab work, and stuff like that. A vacuum is much more difficult than a pressure situation. All these things lost their blood vacuums. Now what was it worth? Glass all the way around it. We take a flat plate collector. You think the heat loss comes out of the back of the collector or the glass? The glass, of course. It all goes out of the glass. So if you have glass all the way around it, what kind of collector do you have? Not very good. So it's got to have the vacuum. And a lot of these lost their vacuums. So that was the first alliteration of vacuum tube collectors. <laughs> they got a bad name. Uh, when, when you put up a whole, whole bunch of collectors and all of a sudden they're not performing anywhere near, you know, five or ten years later, they're not performing like they did when they were new. You get a bad name out of it. Vacuum tube collectors today are mostly made, most of them in the world today are made with what's called a twin tube. Now, where does this vacuum technology come from? It actually comes from thermos bottles. Because thermos bottles. Because every thermos bottle has a little vacuum tube in it. Thermos flask. Do they keep liquids warm for 12 hours when a coffee pot won't keep, or a coffee cup won't keep it warm for a half hour? Yeah, they do. It's because of the vacuum. Whether it's a stainless steel one or glass, doesn't matter. But it comes out of that, and they started building vacuum tubes like that, or some companies did. Some still build them the old way, and they claim that they have this solved now with different kinds of soda lime glass and some other stuff. I don't know that for sure. These are manufacturers that say that. But I definitely like the idea that, you know, of a thermos flask because, well, I've had one for 20 years and I know it keeps coffee warm. Uh, so this is called a twin tube, made just like a thermos bottle. And in the twin tube, it has uh, the uh, vacuum contained all in the glass inside the tube. So it doesn't have a transition between glass and metal. Then what most of the manufacturers are doing today, they use what's called a heat pipe. Heat pipe. And a heat pipe is simply any kind of tube that is filled with something that will boil at a relatively low temperature. Some people take and fill their, some manufacturers fill their heat pipe with water, but then they pull a vacuum inside here. And when you pull a vacuum on something, it boils at a much lower temperature. Uh, some people use an alcohol water solution. What they're trying to get is, a, is something inside here that will boil at well, around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you put this out in the sun, it boils up to here. 
then this plugs into a heat exchanger where the, the circulation fluid is going. It condenses, goes back to a liquid, falls down the tube. So right inside the tube, even a little small tube like this, you have a circulation going on. Vapor going up to the top, condensing because it is being cooled by the liquid coming from a tank. That liquid falls down and it's an endless cycle in a heat pipe. There's a vacuum tube. Please be careful with the vacuum tube. The vacuum tube is real glass. It's not plastic like the... Uh, I wish I could get a plastic vacuum tube. I wouldn't break so many. Questions about that? Big deal with the vacuum tube is it has much superior insulation. It is more susceptible to hail than uh, tempered glass. The glass, the actual kind of glass they use in vacuum tubes, well, I don't, I, I don't believe they can actually make one with tempered glass. I'm not sure why they don't use tempered glass. They use borosilicate glass, which is uh, the same thing as uh, Pyrex. <coughs> You're familiar with Pyrex, a tough glass, much tougher than annealed. It is not as tough as, as uh, tempered, though. What's that? Yes, typically vacuum tubes have been more expensive. That's why they've been harder to penetrate the market. But it's coming down, see? They don't have as much copper in them. In some cases, they have almost no copper, except for maybe the heat pipe tube. And so there's parity that's coming. I don't think it's here yet. I hear about it all the time, but whenever I go to price stuff out, it's, uh, uh, well, no, not necessarily. When you come down to it, the efficiency changes with what temperatures are, all right? And so when the temperature is warmer, actually the flat plate is more efficient. When the temperature is colder, the vacuum tube is more efficient. So it does change. And it's, why is that change there? Heat loss. You see, as it gets hotter and hotter, the flat plate loses more and more energy relatively. The vacuum tube loses less. Let me show you a picture of one here that, right there. That has the horizontal pipe in it, okay? Here's the vacuum tubes. This is actually the exact same manufacturer that I'm passing around there. So this has, each one of those tubes is going to have the heat pipe tube in it. And it plugs into this manifold up here. Plugs into it. Actually plugs in like you were plugging a uh, cord into a receptacle. And so the fluid circulates through this pipe right there. Can you see it? I don't think I have a better shot of that. Yeah, there it is. It can be. It can be. In many cases, it is antifreeze, an antifreeze solution. It can be potable water. I'll get to that in just a little while, though. So anytime the heat loss becomes a big factor, the vacuum tubes kick in and win. But when it's not a big factor, so what do you think? Who else would outperform the other one in the summertime, do you think? What do you think? Anybody got an opinion? Mm -hmm. And what do you think in the middle of winter, in January? Yeah, and you're, you're probably right 95% of the time with the answers you just gave. They have some that have reflectors inside of them. They have, this one is the cheap, the real cheap Chinese one where the vacuum tube that I'm passing around to you, if you take that heat pipe out of it and you just fill it with water and you plug it into this 20-gauge uh, stainless steel tank with a little rubber grommet, 200 bucks, $200. Here is one right here. There it is. That's what they're putting up by the millions in China. <clears throat> Can we put that in here in the United States? It's unpressurized. If you give up your pressurized water system, you can have one. 